Hello everybody, this is West here, Principal at Timber Moore High School. Um, I'm going to let you into a little secret. I've already recorded this once and then when I went to update it and put it onto YouTube, it deleted itself and it's got all corrupted. So I'm going to have to start all over again. So there you go. So this is what happens sometimes. That's technology for you. Right, can we jump straight in? I'm going to talk about technology. Um, doesn't always go right, does it? Um, I've had a few conversations in the last uh, couple of weeks with, with parents. And I know speaking to other colleagues, they, they've had similar kind of conversations around, um, you know, why have we not done live lessons? So I'm just going to address that, you know, uh, straight off the bat. Um, you know, we've got to make decisions about what's a good use of our time and what's going to have the most impact on young people's lives. And, and I fully appreciate that for, for some people may feel that live lessons streamed or on YouTube or record or whatever it might be um, is the most effective tool to use. So we did a lot of research around this about what would be the best method for our students and obviously the best use of our resource. We looked at about 460, just over 460 schools across the region, uh, sorry, region, across the country. Um, and the levels of engagement, that means obviously the levels that students are actually engage with that piece of work is only 16%. Now that's incredibly low, uh, as you can appreciate, because um, you know the amount of work that goes into that, the empirical evidence is saying that that is not the best method. Um, on top of that, I'm in conversations every single week with um, a group of 22 secondary head teachers uh, on, on teams um, and we have a weekly conversation about what we're doing in schools and I can, I can assure you out of, out of those schools across North Yorkshire and Leeds and West Yorkshire, um, we're pretty consistent with what they're doing and some of them are doing and are trialing live lessons as you'd expect and they're not having much success with it for all kinds of reasons, be it safeguarding, be it, be it students or staff not following protocols to make sure that they're getting the best out of the experience, broadband issues, lack of IT equipment, lack of laptops, etc., um, or these levels of engagement. And there's a lot of schools that are kind of peeling back from that. So I just wanted to kind of say to parents that I fully understand why I would think that would be the, the best way to kind of solve the problem of getting, getting your child to make the most amount of progress whilst the teacher's not with them. I completely get that. But unfortunately, the, the data is pretty clear. It, it isn't the best method, okay? But that doesn't mean we're not going to try and pursue that as an extra tool to uh, the work that we're doing already, which is through class charts, which is an established method that we've kind of established over the last few years that we've used for, for homework that has proven to be pretty useful for us in the last couple of months. So that's the first thing. So if that's not the magic bullet to try and get the best out of your um, your child and to help them the best prepare for the next stage in their learning or whatever they might choose to do. What is the magic bullet? Well, I'll tell you what the magic bullet is. You know, we're all we're all kind of used now, used to having technology in our pockets. So, you know, most most people will have a smartphone of some description or have access to a laptop or some kind of device. And, you know, at any point during the day, even if you don't have access to these these things, we can go to a, a school computer and we can go to Google and we can type in something and ask a question. So all of us have pretty much every answer to every question we might ask on Google. Fingertips away, just a couple of taps away. So given that, why is it that people are not fully engaged with online learning as we've found across the country, not least in Temple Moor? Well, it just proves this notion about the importance of schools. And one particular aspect of, of, of the importance of schools that, that I'm going to share with you, that even though we have all those answers at our fingertips, we still that's still not enough for us. And this is the reason why we need schools. And what we need is we need those expectations, we need those structures, we need those routines, we need that behaviour policy, those rewards and sanctions. We need to know exactly where we are, what time we have to be up, what time we're going to finish. We need to know what time is break time and lunch time and all of those things in between. And those rules and regulations, as much as sometimes we rile against them, and I know some of you do, and some of we all fall foul of those and get sanctioned sometimes. Even I did at school, I can assure you, I was... Um, sanctioned several times for various misdemeanors, but we've all done it, um, but we all know where we are. And that not only helps us in terms of working to with purpose, which we, we don't have when we're working on our own at home just with a computer, it also is a huge motivation to do well because we're around other people, okay? So when we have all those structures in place and we have other people around, we are highly successful. And you know we've proven that at the school the last few years. And I think that personally, and when I speak to colleagues across the region in other um, schools, they're of the same mindset, which is that we desperately need children back in the schools. And um, we know that 
you know, you know, if you look at your evolutionary biology, even the reason why we we succeed so well um, in life as humans is because we are extremely adept at learning from each other socially. And again, the empirical evidence is very, very strong on this. That without that kind of peer pressure of being in a group, or that peer learning, or that peer listening, or that peer feedback, without that, we're a bit lost. And I think many of us students at home listening to this and myself and my staff were struggling with that lack of routine and we're all desperate to get back to that so for me it'd be great to have light of lessons but they just don't have the impact anywhere near the same as being in schools so you know we need to be back don't we so hopefully next week when we've got tens and twelves in you know when we get back into lessons it's going to be you know a really positive experience for you all and you'll take that experience back home and also utilize the online learning that's been provided for you for the last few months so let's hope that's the case because it's highly likely that as we go into september we're going to need more of that remote learning and why do i say that well there's all kinds of stories being banded about and i'm, I'm going to do my best not to get dragged into um, um politics I, i've almost fallen into the trap last few weeks so i'm trying not to there's lots of stories in the media about potential for a second spike and how that'll be managed so if that was to happen, obviously we'd have to close the school. And what we can't have is, is the same situations we've had before, which is why we need to make sure that we become more au fait, more confident and more competent in our use of remote learning and then complementing it with in-school learning. So that's the kind of process we're looking at. Now, in a perfect world, that won't happen. And we just come back in September and we crack on and everything gets back to normal very quickly and we start making gains in our learning and get ready for our next steps Next steps in whatever we, we might be doing in terms of careers or sixth form or GCSEs. So let's see what happens. So let's just talk a little bit about September then. And obviously, you know, because I mentioned there about the future. Again, the media is, is put out um, information about secondary bubbles, as they're called. Right. Just to be clear, the guidance that supports the intention to have secondary bubbles and just so everyone knows what that means it'll be locked down year groups so if you had an outbreak in a year group you could send that year group home and then you retain all the other year groups and the school will continue so try and minimize that uh, disturbance to people's learning and i get that that's gonna be really problematic around moving the school around many people have suggested solutions to that and you know we've thought about a few this week but until the guidance comes out which will won't be until the end of next week we can't do anything so it's, it's helpful that we're all going to be back to school in September, but it's unhelpful that we actually don't know what the rules are for that. And again, as I said to you in previous weeks, if I don't follow the rules, we're all going to be in trouble. So we'll wait and see what that says, but I'm going to say to you now, I'm going to ask my staff not to plan complex timetable changes to facilitate all this until the end of August, all right? And that isn't because I'm not being proactive or I'm not being forward thinking far from it. I'm being practical and I'll explain you why. Um, the 7th of September, I think, is, is nine weeks away from now. If you think back about where we were nine weeks ago and I was talking to you about how things have progressed and changed during that period of time, it isn't beyond the realms of possibility that in nine weeks' time, things will have changed again. So even if this guidance comes out next week to say this is how you run a secondary bubble, it might have changed in nine weeks' time. So what I've decided to do is to wait until the last two weeks of August at that point, myself and my senior team will look at the timetable and see how we organise the year groups and how we move around the building, etc., etc. So I will be in touch with you with precise details about how that will work. But let's hope everything runs smoothly over the summer and we come back on the 7th of September and it's just business as usual, okay? Fingers crossed. Right, next thing. When you do come back in September, and this is kind of on the back of um, commitments I've made previously when I've, when I've spoken to you through my video address each week, is I've made a, a firm commitment to the well-being of, of the children in the school and the, the young people in the school. And I've even done that you know, on, on occasions at the detriment for, for their academic learning. And because I've tried to put the mental health, the well-being at the top of my priority. And to that end, what we've done is this week, we're really lucky we've, we've employed a mental health worker in school. So that person will be joining us in, joining us in September and they'll be working with the cluster team, which obviously uh, provides more specialist um, home support. And we can draw on that expertise and obviously we invest in that heavily here. And then we can draw upon our pastoral care that we have from our year leaders and, and other staff in school. So we've got a kind of triage there of support and a package really. 
And on top of that, we obviously rewritten our uh, personal development curriculum. I say obviously because I've mentioned it previously before. And that personal development curriculum will be about how we kind of cope with the situation we've just come from and how we re-engage with the world now, the new normal, and what we do for the future, what might happen and how we cope with it. So that's quite a comprehensive package that we've been working on to make sure that when your child comes back to school, as I said before, they are cared for, they feel safe, and if they feel safe, they're happy, if they're happy, they'll thrive, if they thrive, the academic success will come. So I think we struck the balance right there, but as I say, um, we're always open to feedback, and I know that many of you are very helpful in feeding back to us around what we can do to improve the school, so thank you for that. And I would encourage you to continue to do that. Um, year 11s, okay, year 11s, I'm, I'm sure you feel that you've been neglected in the last couple of months or so, and obviously that's not the case, and I'm sorry if, if that's, the, that's how you feel. Um, your year 11 tutor will be in touch with you over the next couple of weeks via telephone. So I've asked them to do that uh, starting from Monday. Now, if you are not contacted by next Friday, okay, please get in touch with us via the MyEd app, and ask where's my phone call okay and um, we're going to talk to you about your well-being obviously we'll talk about how things have been for you and we'll talk about what what kind of um thinking you've had about what you're going to do next so that that will take place next week into the second week so again as i say if you don't get any contact please get in touch with us right the last thing i'm going to talk to you about today is a bit of a good news story really that in the midst of all of this crisis and um all this hard work and frustration and all this 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 um, remote learning and all this dealing with the pressures of, of losing loved ones and all the, all the, all that that kind of mess that we're, that, we've, that we're trying to muddle our way through there are some of you that are working so hard I cannot thank you enough and I, I can't mention you by name for obvious reasons but I'm going to talk about what you've done okay there are a number of students who have done this and one in particular I was really lucky to bump into a parent this week um, and it spoke about his child about what he's been doing in the last um last few weeks and sorry since lockdown and he talked about being how diligent and hard working was at home and how he'd been so independent and that he'd chosen to um, keep to the routine that I'd asked him to do at the start of the, the, the lockdown which I asked all of you to do which was to stick to your normal timetable and then in fact what he's done, done is he gets up in the morning puts his uniform on goes and works in a quiet space in, in, the, in the home works through keeps his breaks goes to his different lessons and then at the end of the school day gets out his uniform, puts his normal clothes on, and goes and plays and does whatever he wants to do. I mean, I, I, I'm, and I'm really, really, really grateful for that kind of attitude. I mean, that is just exceptional. Okay, I can't thank you enough for what you've done there. And as I say, there are other students like that are doing the same thing. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for that because, you know, that's such a tonic and such a pickup that in the midst of all of this, there are people still out there doing their very, very best. So all credit to you. So thank you for that. Right, that's enough for this week, I think. Um, next week, hopefully I'll be able to talk to you about the experiences of year 10 and 12 in school and how that's looked. And then that'll give you kind of a sense about other year groups, how it'll look when we come back in September. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to share with you a bit more details about plans for some of you to come in, um, hopefully the back end of August, to kind of do some work to prepare you for when you come back in the week after in September. But I'll talk about that hopefully next week. Uh, so in the meantime, I'll just wish you all well. I would like you to, I'd like to say enjoy the sunshine, but the sunshine's gone now, hasn't it? It's, it's now raining all weekend. So all I'll say is stay safe, um, look after your families, and I'll speak to you all this time next week. All the best.